Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Ahlan wa sahlan. My name is Yaqat Zaman. Hope you guys are having a fantastic day. This is the channel Roots of Knowledge. And if you guys like my videos and enjoy the work that I do, hit the like button, subscribe, and hit the bell button to get the latest updates, inshallah. Right, so now we are going through Diwan of Sayyidina Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu ta'ala. If you guys enjoy Imam Ali's poetry, then please also share these videos with others. And it's a very amazing way for you guys to develop your vocab, honestly. This is probably, I would say, one of the best ways to be able to do that. And you're memorizing things as well. So he says, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ بَنَوْ فَطَالَ بِنَاؤُهُمْ وَاسْتَمْتَعُوا بِالْأَهْلِ وَالْأَوْلَادِ جَرَتِ الْرِيَاحُ عَلَى مَحَلِّ دِيَارِهِمْ فَكَأَنَّهُمْ كَانُوا عَلَى مِيعَادِ Short poem, he says, إِنَّ الَّذِي Indeed, those people, بَنَوْ بَنَا يَبْنُوا means to build. And this word comes in the Quran many times. بِنَا If you know where it comes in the Quran, put it there as well. The word بَنَا is also used in the Quran as well. Bana means one who does something bina, the action of bina, building time after time. Right. So this is an Arabic word that is used so many times in the Arabic language in various forms. So for example, you might say this is a mabna. This is a building, a mabna. Or you might even say this is mab. This masala is mabniyun ala hada. This masala is built upon. This is founded upon this. All right. So you have that ban banuna as well, which some might argue this might be from the from its origin as well, Banu, which means children, the specifically the male children as well, are known as the Banun, um, and uh, Abna. Right? So this word is it's like Ibtina, Ibtana, Yabtani, Ibtina, Mubtana. I remember the first time I actually came across this word, I remember using it was in Usul Shashi. Um, and over there it was, you know, Ma Yubtana Alehi Gheruhu Al Aslu, wa Ma Yubtana Alehi Gheruhu. Right? So this is the word that you want to focus on. You want to try to use it as much as you can. So, inna ladina bano, indeed those people who have built. Right? So, when you do building, you start from the bottom and you go upwards. Fatala bina uhum, tala yatulu. It means to prolong or to become long. Right? So, tala yatulu, like if you were to stretch an elastic band, you would say this elastic band is tala. Right? It's getting longer. And if it gets short, the opposite of tala yatulu is qasura yaksuru. Right? It means to become shortened. So, if you want to describe a person who is tall in height, you would say this person is tawil, tawil. And if you want to describe a person who is short in Arabic, you would say qasir. This person is qasir. Tulul qama, right, is describing the height of a person. So uh, th the word tawila, I don't know, maybe the word tawila has some reference to this. If you guys know, let me know. Tawila is like a desk that people use to put things on. And this word also. Tawwala yutawwilu tatwil is also used as well. Atala yutilu italatan. Italat al ghurra. Yes, it comes in a hadith as well. And yutila ghurratahu. So the tala yatulu and atala yutilu comes from the same word and the same as tatwil. Tawwala yutawwilu. Yutawwil bina salat. This person he prolongs the salat, lengthens the salat. In fact, there was a Sahabi who used to just pray really long, long rakats and someone complained to the Prophet about him. And the word they used was, Inna fulanan yutawwil bin as salat. Okay, now this word also is used in a hadith, yatatawaluna fil bunyan. Tatawala yatatawalu. It means they are competing with one another from Bab Tafa'ul. Tatawala yatatawalu tatawulan. They are competing with one another in building, right? So in structure. So they are building competing in making the bigger making the building bigger so the prophet said before the end of time there'll come a time when people and specifically muslims will be competing with one another to try to see who can make the biggest building the longest building right the longest whether it's longest upwards or whether it's longest you know horizontally allah save us fatala tawil fatala bina'uhum so tala bina so bina is the structure so inna ladina bano fatala bina'uhum. So indeed those people who built, those people who came in the past and they built things, they built a society, they built homes and they built schools, etc. Fatala bina'uhum and their buildings became tall. Right? So normally if you go around the world and you look at different societies, you look at a very primitive society, you won't see many structured buildings, big buildings, right? But the more they advance, you'll see that they 
one of the things that they're known for is the bigger buildings, taller buildings. وَاسْتَمْتَعُوا بِالْأَهْلِ وَالْأَوْلَادِ اسْتَمْتَعَ يَسْتَمْتِعُ اسْتِمْتَعَ It's from the word mut'a. Mut'a in Arabic means to take enjoyment, to take pleasure. Okay, and there is, uh, you know, in the Quran as well, تَمَتَّعُوا Allah says to the disbelievers, تَمَتَّعُوا uh, Enjoy, t- have a, a short while of enjoyment. Have a short while of enjoyment. Enjoy yourself for a short while, because then after that, azab is going to come. Right, so تَمَتَّعُوا فِي دِيَارِكُمْ so this word muta it means enjoyment. And in fact, there's actually a type of marriage which is known as the muta marriage, which the Prophet ﷺ, he told Sahaba not to do, that he banned it, which was like a temporary marriage. It was like an enjoyment, a short pleasure enjoyment. So this was then later on banned. But the point is, is that this word muta came from this as well. So in the Quran, they also we, this word is also used quite frequently as well. If you if you know any examples in the Quran where this word muta tamatta uh, istamta'a, right? Put it in the comments below and see the different meanings that it has or the different applications. Istamta'a is to seek pleasure because it comes from the verb istif'al. Right? So, those of you guys who know about sarf, you would know that sarf istif'ala yastaf'ilu, this kind of comes for the meaning of seeking something. So, seeking muta'a, seeking some sort of enjoyment and pleasure. Bil ahli wal awlad. Ahl is family and awlad is children. Right, so bil ahli wal awlad. So, for example, ahlul bayt, the Prophet ﷺ's family, ahlul bayt, like you probably hear, and awlad, obviously, it's from the word walad, child. So, awlad is children. So, was and they and they sought pleasure. They were searching for pleasure with their families and their children. Right, so they enjoyed themselves and they did everything that they wanted to do. Jaratir riyahu ala mahalli diyarihim. Jara yajari. Right, it means to run. Right, or it can mean to flow. If it's talking about water, so if you say the water jara, then it means float. Right? And if you're talking about animals or humans, then you say jara ran. So this is the thing about Arabic words. Arabic words in different contexts can have slightly different translations. So this is an important thing, especially when you're trying to translate verses of the Quran. You have to know like the word daraba, for example. Daraba can mean strike. But daraba can also mean to give an example as well. And daraba can also mean um, to travel, right? Yadribuna fil ardi. So this this word daraba, depending on the context it appears in, can have a slightly different meaning. And that's very important for any student of knowledge to be aware of that, not to translate. I remember, you know, sometimes, you know, I remember when I first learned the translation of uh, breaking wudu, right? So it was a naqada, naqadal wudu. This was like in the in the year one. Yeah, so in year one it was naqadal wudu. So I was like thinking to myself, this word, like, like how can I use it in other places? So I started using it, naqadha al-kitab, I broke the book, or, you know, naqadha al-yad, naqadha yad fulanin. And then someone told me later on that, no, you're not, naqadha is actually specific for things that are abstract, breaking things that are abstract, like an agreement or something like that. And if you want to say it for something physically, say kasara, yeah, kasara. So again, this is one of those words, jara, right? So jara, jarat ar riyah. So the winds blow. So when you say jarat ar riyah, it's obviously the winds are blowing. You don't see the winds are running, or the winds are flowing. So jarat ar riyah. Riyah is from the word rih. Rih actually means wind, right? So in the Quran as well, this comes quite a lot. Yeah, arsalna riyah, arsalna riyah, riyah. So jarat ar riyah, the winds blew. Ala mahalli diyarihim. So mahal means the location. And the word halla yahullu, which means something that comes in some, a place. This is not halla yahillu. Okay, halla yahillu means to make something halal. Halla yahullu, it means to befall something you know, occurs on a certain place. So mahal, when they say the, this is the mahal, it means this is the ism zarf, this is the location where the thing has occurred. Right, so you say this is the mahal of, of his house, etc. Diyar is the jama of. Um, uh, you know, Dawrun or Diyar, Durun, Darun. Dar is a singular, and then Jama can be Diyarun or Durun. Yeah, Dur. Now, Dir, the word Dir, you might have heard the word Dir. Dir actually means a, a monastery, right? Or or Dair, Dir, Ila Dair, I think. It's Dair, isn't it? Yeah, Dair. Ila Dairi, Ila Dairi. Right, let's go to the monastery. So, a Dair. 
Uh, and then diyar is obviously estate, properties, houses, homes, diyar. Diyari Bakr, Diyari Bakr, Diyar Fulan, Diyar Pakistan, Diyar Arab. So Jarat al Riyahu, the winds blew ala upon the mahal, the location of their homes. Fakaannahum kanu ala mi'ad. Fakaannahum kaanna, it means harf mushabba bilfil, which means as though. It's as though the wind is blowing on it in such a way that it's as though they were kanu ala mi'ad. They were on a specific appointed time. Yeah, kanu ala mi'ad. So mi'ad is from the word maw'id and it's from the word wa'ad. Right, wa'ad means a promise. So maw'id or mi'ad actually means a place, time or a place that's promised. So basically what he's saying is the people of the past came and they've gone now. Right, now if you look at their homes, they had so much desires. They wanted to have families and they wanted to enjoy the time with their children, eat all these different types of foods and all of that thing, travel around. If you look at their homes now, all you see is the wind blowing over them. Now, it's as though these people had their appointed time, they came and they left. So it's kind of like, you can almost say it's a kind of nasiha, it's advice for me and you, that you know what, you're not going to be here for a very long time. You're going to be enjoying the same things that they enjoyed. And you're going to be looking forward to committing the same sins that they committed. And you're going to be looking forward to all of these things. But remember, your time is limited. You're, you're, you're living on borrowed time, like they say. Yeah, and a time is going to come in the future, 100 years time, 200 years time, and people will look at your homes and you will just see a ruins there. Winds will be blowing back and forth. And it's as though the wind, because remember when winds blow on something, that's a sign that it's, um, it's like you know, when they have those dust balls and they go across. So it's like this is, this is like gone, finished. No one lives here anymore now. It's very powerful, isn't it? See how, how much imagery he brings into this. Banau fatala bina'uhum. They built and then their binas were massive. Their structures were massive, big, tall. And they enjoyed, istamta'u bil ahli wal awlad. Enjoyed their times with their families. And then all of a sudden it's like seeing changes now. They're gone. Where are they on? The wind's blowing. And normally when the wind blows, it's like a sign that this place is derelict. Nothing's there anymore. Kanu ala mi'ad. Tayyib yaqul, إن الذين بنوا إن إن الذين قد سبقنا وجاءوا من قبل فبنوا أبنية بنوا بيوت ومدارس وغير ذلك من ال من ال من المباني التي تروا مثل ال مثل ال أهل مصر القدماء نعم الذين جاءوا من قبل تروا بنوا فطال بناءهم أصبح بناءهم طويلة جدا كبيرة جدا نعم كأنهم يخلدون في الأرض لمدة طويلة واستمتعوا بالأهل والأولاد ووجدوا المتعة يعني استمتعوا أخذوا الفائدة استمتعوا بالأهل بآلهم بأسرتهم والأولادهم وبناتهم وبنينهم جرت الرياح على محل فالآن قد انقضى عصرهم يعني إن قرضوا ولا نسمع لهم دويا ولا نسمع لهم شيء ولا نرى نرى شيء جرت الرياح ما بقي هو ديارهم الخالية والحواء تجري الرياح تجري الرياح تمر على هذه الديار محل ديارهم على مواضع بيوتهم خالية ممكن هناك أيضا يعني الوحوش أيضا تمر فيه فكأنهم كانوا على ميعاد يعني الحال كأن هؤلاء كانوا على ميعاد على وقت خاص محدد من الله سبحانه وتعالى أتوا ومضوا ولم يبقى شيء وقد استمتعوا بهذه المدة القصيرة وهذا الشعر هو من نصاح الجميلة جدا يعني كان ينبغي أن يكتب مثل هذا بالذهب لأن هذا أيضا نصيحة لنا أيضا بأننا بقينا في هذه الدنيا مدة, مدة قليلة ولا ندري كم بقي لنا من المدة وقد استمتعنا بما عندنا كما استمتع هؤلاء بما عندهم فمنا من 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 يجري خلف المعاصي ومنا من من يعني يحاول طاعة الله سبحانه وتعالى فهكذا يعني شأن الناس كلهم يعني كأنهم في دوار يدور فيه يدور إلى أن يموت وهكذا هؤلاء قد جاءوا ومضوا وهكذا نحن أيضا نسأل الله سبحانه وتعالى أن يجعل هذا الوقت القصير الذي عندنا في هذه الدنيا 
حسنات التي توزن بها يوم القيامة وندخل بها إن شاء الله يوم الجنان الله سبحانه وتعالى يوم القيامة جزاكم الله خير شكرا Thank you very much for watching this video guys. I hope you guys enjoy your week. If you guys are loving these videos, please hit the like button, subscribe button. It means a lot to me. And thank you to my special patrons who support my channel. If you guys want to become patrons and you guys want to support the work that I do, please consider it. It means a lot to me. And uh, inshallah, I will see you guys next time. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.